Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dunit from Event Driven Utopia. Today we are going to talk about the commands, events and queries in microservices communication. As per our agenda today, let's look at why microservices communicate in the first place. Then we will learn about the commands, events and queries with some examples. Finally, we will see when to use them in your microservices application. In a typical application architecture, microservices do not stay in isolation. They need to interact with each other. Most of the time, these interactions are centered around their state. You know, microservices maintain a local state. To achieve a certain business use case, they need to query or mutate someone else's state. These communications happen through messages. We can divide these messages into three categories based on their interaction style. They are commands, events, and queries. In the coming sections, we'll learn more about each message type, see some examples, and decide where to use them. Before diving into the concepts, let's take an example for a better understanding. In this e-commerce application, the front-end fetches the product price from the catalog service to display in the UI. When a user checks out the cart, the front-end invokes the order service to place an order. After processing the order, the order service notifies the shipping service and the email service about the new order. In this simple example, we can see commands, events and queries working together to achieve common goal. As we progress through the discussion, let's break this example down to identify each message type in detail. What is a command? A command is a point-to-point -point message sent when a service requires an action to be carried out by another service. In simplest terms, a command is an instruction to do something. Commands are often expressed in imperative form, such as do this and do that. A command has an issuer and a designated processor. A command must be processed exactly once. So we need to make sure that a command must not be received by more than one processor. However, a command can be declined by the issuer as a result of a malformed payload or a business rules violation. The issuer also expects a response back from the consumer about the confirmation of the processing. Commands usually carry a high value message or something that is expensive to process. Consider an example of transferring money between accounts, processing a customer order, or encoding a video. The transfer of such messages may be subject to certain deadlines, might have to occur at certain times, and may have to be processed in a certain order. Commands often mutate the state of the consumer and cause side effects. For example, after processing a command, a processor may send an email, invoke an endpoint, or trigger a workflow. If you go back to our example, the front-end sends a command to the order service to place an order. You may ask, why did we choose a command for that? Because an order is a high-value message, its delivery must be guaranteed and processed exactly once by a unique receiver. What is an event? An event represents a fact that happened in the past. For example, the hotel was booked, the order has been placed, and the account was debited. Events are immutable. Because events happened in the past, they cannot be changed or undone. Unlike a command, an event cannot be rejected by its receiving service. It represents something that has already happened. Events are one-way messages. Events have a single source that produces the event. One or more recipients or subscribers may receive events. 
Compared to commands, the event producer has no intention of getting a response from the recipient. Both parties are unknown to each other. Events are notifications about change of state in event producers. Typically, events include parameters that provide additional information about the event. For example, the item ID 45 was purchased by Alice and the room 123 was booked by James. If we go back to our example, the order service raises an event after saving the order to its database. Shipping and email services are interested in that event as well. What is a query? A query is an on-demand request for information from another service. In simplest terms, a query is about asking a question about someone's state. A query has a client and a receiver. Both parties communicate in a synchronous manner. Usually the client sends a query to the receiver as a message over the network. Receiver processes the request and responds back with the response or the answer. Until then, the client waits by blocking its execution. Unlike commands, queries don't mutate the receiver's state. In our example, the front-end sends a request to catalog service asking the price of an item. The catalog service receives the request, checks its database, and responds with the response. A distributed application is likely to use a combination of commands, events, and queries to implement business use cases. So it is necessary to identify all possible intercomponent communication use cases to decide which messaging construct to use. In this section, I'll give you some guidelines for selecting commands, events, or queries when implementing business use cases. When to use queries? Well, queries are the obvious choice when you need an instant response from a service in a synchronous fashion. Queries are all about asking questions from someone else. When to use commands? Consider using commands for application use cases that demand end-to-end -end message delivery guarantee between message producers and consumers. Then if a consumer expects to process messages in the order in which they were published, use commands. Another case is exactly once processing of messages. Finally, if the issuer of a command expects a response from the receiver to confirm the completion of a task. As a takeaway, if you see these requirements, use commands for the communication. When should we use events? Consider using events if the use cases demand loosely coupled interaction with, within your services where event producers are not aware of event consumers at all. Also consider using events to broadcast state changes to interested services in a published subscribe manner. Further to that, events are applicable when you don't expect an acknowledgement from the recipient or you do not care about the response at all. Your sole purpose is to notify others. Okay, let me wrap things up. Microservices communicate to query or mutate each other's state. Communications happens via messages. These messages belong to three categories based on their interaction style. Commands, events, and queries. A microservices application may use a combination of these messages to accomplish a given business use case. In the next video, we'll talk about how to process commands, events, and queries in a scalable and reliable way. Also, we'll look at some patterns that are applicable for processing these messages. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you with another video soon. Stay tuned.